Hi guys, Matt from Orr. So the most common favour I get asked is will you come and change my spare wheel for me? People get stuck on the side of the road and they're unable to change the spare wheel. Uh, today I'm going to show you five reasons why you would get stuck changing your wheel and how you can overcome them. Okay, so these are the three main items you're going to need for changing your spare. If you've just bought a car, you always want to check to make sure that the, the spare and the jack and the wheel brace are in your car. Or if you're taking the end of a car or a car you're unfamiliar with and you're going on a long journey, you want to make sure that you have the essentials that at least if you do get a puncture, you can change on the side of the road. Also, you want to make sure if your car has one of these lock studs on it, that you have the key weight to fit on them. This is quite a common reason also why you would never be able to change a wheel on the side of the road. Okay, so issue number one. You've got everything you need to change the wheel. Now you're just going to attempt to open the studs. But they're, guess what? You can't open them. They're rock tight. The main reason they're rock tight is because they've probably been tightened with an impact gun or an air impact gun. These can tighten up to 400 newton meters or something like this, which is an air impact gun, which can tighten up to even more, which can tighten up to about 600 newton meters, making it virtually impossible to get your wheel nuts off on the side of the road. Okay, so in an ideal world, you'd probably slide a bar or something up on this, but if you're on the side of the road, you're not gonna have one like this. So you're gonna have to make do with what you have. So my top tip for this is we take out the brace and we put a point into 10 o'clock. We haven't the car up on a jack or anything like that, but we have the wheel brace in a position now where we're going to try and stand on the actual brace and open the nuts. By doing this, we're going to put one hand on the car somewhere to hold on. And now we're simply going to put our full weight on the wheel brace, making sure the wheel brace is properly in on the nut. And that is definitely one of the simplest ways to open wheel nuts. The second most common problem people have when they're changing the wheel in their car is that they actually jack the car in the wrong point. They jack it on the edge of the sill, which ends up just damaging the car, damaging the sill. Every manufacturer, they leave uh, certain points on the car to jack it up safely. As you can see in this Ford, these two notches here, this one here and this one over here, demonstrate where the jack should be positioned on the car. On the likes of this Honda Insight, it's easier to see the jacking point as you can see this lip sitting down here clearly which is where you would jack the car from. If you have a pickup truck it's not really a good idea to start jacking out the sidestep. They're not designed for taking the weight of the vehicle. I would go with somewhere like the chassis rail which we know will take the full weight of the vehicle. Okay so the third reason we got the car all jacked up. We got all the studs removed but guess what the wheel is seized on we can't get it off. This is from the wheel not been removed in a long time. Probably with all the heat cycles with the brakes and that the wheels can sometimes seize on. What we're going to do is put one nut on just so the wheel doesn't fall face down and we're going to have to give the wheel a good swift kick. Sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you won't. This wheel wasn't that well seized on. Okay, so the next big issue people have with changing their wheels is the actual weight of the wheel. Uh, some pickups like this or SUVs, the, the wheels can actually be quite heavy. What I like to do is get my legs underneath it and use my actual legs to help actually lift the wheel. This way you can use both your legs and your arms to lift the wheel in position. Also what I like to do is with the stud, I know I put one stud at 12 o'clock, that way if I line the wheel at 12 o'clock it should slip straight on. I know you guys are going to say that you're going to get your clothes dirty, but sometimes when you've got a flat and you're on the side of the road, you haven't got any choice. Okay, so the final thing I see people struggle with is getting access to the spare wheel. In a lot of cars, it's in here in the boot underneath the carpet, it's quite easy to get. But in some vehicles like this Toyota, the spare wheel is mounted up underneath. Okay, so a lot of people give up at this point when they see the spare wheel buried up underneath like that. But the manufacturer will always make it easier for you to remove the spare wheel. That's why if you check your tool kit and go through all your tool kit, you should have everything you need to remove the spare wheel. In the case of this Toyota, we just simply slide in the extension piece, which in turn simply slides into our receiver, which then drops the spare wheel. Okay guys, so that's my five reasons why people can't change wheels on their car and hopefully five solutions that some should help somebody out. Um, I have an Instagram channel guys if you want to check out what I do daily on it. I put stuff on my stories every single day and you guys might enjoy some of that content. 
it's uh, mad from horse and i hope you enjoyed the video guys and thanks for watching